Sam Weigel with V1 Rotate here. I'm switching things up a bit this week, doing a video instead of a written piece for First Friday. There's been something kind of wild going on lately and I couldn't wait to talk to you about it. You know how I'm always going on about the craziness of the pilot shortage and how every time I come to work it seems like something major has changed? Well, the one thing that doesn't change very often, or very quickly, are the labor contracts that most airline pilots work under. Well, in the last couple of weeks, we've had five new contracts come out, one after another. Crazy, right? Let's dive into what it's all about. To start, you should know that virtually all Part 121 airline pilots in the U.S. are unionized. There is one large carrier, SkyWest, that is non-union, but even they basically just copied all the features of unionized airlines, such as seniority lists, longevity-based pay, and scheduling rules. Every time a new airline starts up that's non-union, inevitably, their pilots just end up voting in a union within a few years. And this even though airline pilots do tend to be pretty conservative, politically speaking. Note to self, I should do a video about pilot unions. Most unions in the United States are governed by the National Labor Relations Act, except for those at the railways and the airlines, both of whom fall under the Railway Labor Act, or RLA. Now, the history and practice of contract negotiations under the RLA is an interesting and complex subject which probably merits its own video. Note to self, but for our purposes, what you need to know is that airline contracts never expire, they only become amendable. And negotiating a new contract is a lengthy, time-consuming process that is designed primarily to avoid events that would inconvenience the general public, such as strikes or lockouts. Also prohibited thanks to rulings by anti-labor judges, sick outs, not picking up overtime, slow taxing, or just a notable lack of enthusiasm. I'm not kidding. Sometimes this leads to ridiculously delayed contracts, such as when Republic Airways stalled negotiations with their pilots for eight years. My own airline has been without a contract since the end of 2019, and our pilots are getting a little restless. Yes, there was the slight complicating factor of a worldwide pandemic. The one thing that moves contract negotiations right along is, you guessed it, the invisible hand of market forces, such as, you know, oh, a historic crippling pilot shortage. For those who've been living under a rock for the last 20 years, here is basically what happened. Some ignorant assholes crashed planes into buildings, the big airlines got small, the small airlines got jets, the contracts got gutted, the retirement age got raised, the invisible hand just turned out to be some Wall Street mother rigging things in their favor, the regional airline pilots got stuck making food stamp wages, the major airlines made sure they stayed making food stamp wages, the major airline pilots got old and oh wait, oh crap, no one's been learning to fly for the next decade, who's going to man the nation's cockpits? Well shoot, I don't know, who could have seen this coming? Me. I saw this coming, as did everyone who is paying attention to anything other than the next quarter's profits. Yeah, that pilot shortage. So, with all the geezers retiring off to, I don't know, Florida, and those of us who gutted out a broke decade at the regionals replacing them, and those currently at the regionals replacing us, um, who's gonna fly for the regionals? Probably one of the nation's 163,934 ATPs, or 104,610 commercial pilots, or maybe a few of the 161,459 private pilots, or 250,197 student pilots can be lured to train for the job. What are we going to lure them with? Oh yeah! Which brings us to a couple of weeks ago when, out of the blue, Envoy Airlines, which is one of American Airlines' regional partners, announced they had reached an agreement for a contract extension with their pilot union. Now, honestly, I don't think any of us knew they were in negotiations. Their contract wasn't up until 2024. The deal included immediate base rate increases of 13 to 16% for captains and 18 to 27% for first officers, which is pretty decent for an unscheduled raise, but not necessarily earth-shattering stuff. The real news is that the deal also includes temporary pay increases of 50% above those new base rates for the first two years of the contract. This will bring Envoy's first year first officer rate up to $90 an hour. First year captains will make $146 an hour. 
For a 20 year captain, that number moves to $214 and line check airmen can make a whopping $428 an hour. For comparison, a senior United 777 captain makes only $352 an hour. I should note that these envoy rates are before any bonuses, which for experienced candidates can yield up to $187,500. They're also giving you longevity credit for previous airline experience and paying experienced first officers as captains and a bunch of other crazy stuff that pretty much completely blows my mind. The day after Envoy's announcement, fellow American Airlines partner airlines Piedmont and PSA ceased operations as all their pilots quit and applied to Envoy. <laughs> Just kidding, that totally didn't happen. Mostly because PSA and Piedmont immediately matched Envoy's contract. So we have not one, not two, but three new contracts in the space of one week that completely redefine what it means to be paid as a regional airline pilot. I don't see how the other regionals will have any choice but to follow suit or involuntarily contract due to lack of pilots. Wow, so much great news. I'm sure you're excited to hear about the other two contracts. Hold on to your socks. They involve United and UPS, one of the largest passenger carriers and one of the largest cargo carriers. In this environment, I'm sure their pilots got really killer deals, right? No, no they did not. They basically kept up with inflation, perhaps less if it stays at 8%. There's a few things going on here. First off, in the case of United and most of the passenger airlines, they just got done losing a ton of money during the pandemic, despite all that sweet, sweet government cash. They slashed their workforce and their infrastructure in preparation for being dramatically smaller, and now they're really struggling to keep up with explosive demand. Assuming that the economy doesn't go off a cliff, all the majors are about to be obscenely profitable once again. Both the pilot unions and management weren't too eager to negotiate while the companies were still losing money. And now there's so many airlines in negotiations that it's sort of a question who goes first. American, Delta, United, Southwest, and Alaska all have expired contracts and JetBlue just started early negotiations. The pilots at Alaska Airlines have actually already voted to strike, though there's a few steps to go through before they're legal to do so under the RLA. If there wasn't so much uncertainty about the economy, I'd say United's new contract has no chance of passing member ratification in this environment, especially with the news that there are regional pilots making more than United 777 captains. It may still fail, in which case it's back to the negotiating table. If it does pass, you'll see other airlines pattern bargaining off of United's contract, each airline adding a few more percent on top of the last. UPS is kind of a different deal. They never lost money during the pandemic, and in 2021, they made a record-breaking $13 billion in profit on revenues of nearly $100 billion. 2022 is expected to be even more profitable. I'm honestly a little surprised their new contract isn't a little more lucrative, but I don't know enough about their pilot group to say whether this will pass member ratification. Right now, the pilot shortage alone is not enough to make the likes of Delta, United, or UPS significantly improve their contracts. Even with regional pay increasing, most regional pilots will go for the greater stability and more varied flying of a major carrier as soon as they're able. Right now, the majors are still able to fill their new hire classes without changing their requirements by too much. It is the national and low-cost airlines that will have trouble competing for pilots with the regionals on one side and the majors on the other. Already, airlines like JetBlue and Spirit and Alaska are having major issues with attrition as their junior pilots leave for better paid majors. I think it is these airlines that will see the next round of record-breaking contracts just out of the sheer necessity of manning their cockpits. And the regionals, I expect, will continue to be desperate to bid for the services of well-qualified pilots like yourselves, so long as the economy holds and the fee-per-departure business model still exists, which are two pretty big ifs. As always, we'll keep an eye on what is still a rapidly evolving job market and give you our take on what it means for you, the new or aspiring professional pilot. 
Thanks for watching and check out V1 Rotate here at flyingmag.com every first and third Friday of the month.